let's crack open a classic Windows game to see how the sausage is made. Where am I going to put this one? Well, how long we make the sausage? Huh? I spent a lot of time as a kid playing Age of Empires, and now I want to go back and reverse engineer it and see how it works under the hood. I'm not talking about the remastered definitive edition, but the original 1997 release. When reverse engineering anything, you need a goal, so for this I want to get a better idea of how the AI worked. As back when I was playing, I was terrible at the game, and I would get steamrolled by a thousand advanced units, just as I was figuring out how to collect food. So I found a rip of the original game from a questionable site, but it seems to work, so I guess plus one for Windows backwards compatibility. Let's have a look through the game files. Inside data we can see a bunch of files with .ai extensions. These have names like Phalanx Bronze and Priest Iron. They're all text files with what looks like comments and then a row-based structure. Seems to be a character with a number, then a string, then a number, and another number, and sometimes even another number. These strings all look like things that the AI can do, so maybe this is some sort of instruction list. I think the game for us now is to figure out what do these files do. So let's open up the game with Ghidra, it's an open source disassembler and decompiler. This means it will show us the assembly for the game as well as a heuristic approximation of the assembly of C code. Looking through all the strings we can see data backslash percent s and every reference to it is passed as sprintf. This looks like it's being used to build up paths to files in that data directory where all our AI files are. Let's run this under a debugger. I'm using x64 debug so we can see where this is being loaded. So I'm setting a hardware breakpoint on the address of the data backslash percent s string so the debugger will stop when any code reads it. So the game stops, but I can't get back to the debugger. I'm stuck in this jumbo resolution screen app. Let's quit out and go back to Ghidra. If we poke around, we can find the call to create Windows X. This is the Win32 function used for creating a window. Now, looking at the flags, we can see it's past OX8000000 or was pop up. This is what makes it full screen. So let's just patch that out. Okay, so now it's windowed, but the resolution is still offensive and not really helping us get to the debugger. Using Procmon, a tool that lets us see the file system and registry activity, we can see it reads the value 1024, the resolution, from this registry key. And if we change that to something smaller, then we do indeed get a smaller resolution. But this is strange. Normally the width and height are two different values, but this just lets us specify the width. Also, setting it to something reasonable in 2024 doesn't work. If we look in the disassembly for when the registry key is loaded, we can see this bunch of if statements, which sets the height based on the width, and it's got a limited range of valid values. At this point, we're just wasting time trying to solve the wrong problem. But I have spent a little bit of time playing around with it, and I've got a system. When the game hits a breakpoint, we use Windows key and tab, then drag the debugger to a new desktop. I can then use some Windows manipulation to bring it into focus. This might be my least favourite way of using a debugger. Anyway, let's get back to Ghidra and see what else we can glean. The game uses scanf a lot to pass strings into variables, and just looking through some of the format strings in the binary, we can see this one, which matches the format in the AI file. Character, number, string, number, number. So let's look at where this string is being loaded. There's a lot going on here, so let's break it down. The first thing that jumps out to me is all these strings, no build list to load, file open successful, I cannot do it, captain. These are all passed to a function which writes them to a file, so this sounds a lot like a logging function, so we can just go ahead and rename that. The next thing is this called to fgets, which reads a file into this fixed size stack buffer. It also loops until this returns null, and calls fgets again at the end, so this is just reading the file in chunks. Then it passes out some variables using our format string, so what I'll do is just call these things something easier to see in the disassembly, and we'll, we'll rename them something more meaningful as we go along. Now we switch on the first char, and if we change from hex to characters, we can see it's the values from the file we've seen. Looking at the AI files, I think this is some form of action. U for unit, R for research, B for building, maybe? So let's just call this action. The switch statement just converts these chars to numbers, which we'll call action ID. In the case of A and T, whatever they are, 
It then calls scanf again, except this time with an extra number at the end and an asterisk in all of the other formats. The asterisk just tells scanf to consume the match but not assign it to a variable, so this must be what handles that extra number we saw. Looking down a bit, all the arguments seem to be passed to this function, which copies them into various offsets into the first argument. And the first argument is created from this function. Now this is just a hunch, but a function which takes just a size, returns a value that is checked for null, and is then written to is probably some sort of allocator. Internally it's quite complex and contains a lot of critical sections, so I'm inclined to think this is some sort of malloc. Let's put a debugger on this, and we can see that each time it runs, it picks a random AI file. Presumably this is how the game creates random AI on each playthrough. I want to actually observe the AI playing so we can compare it against one of these files. So let's create a game with one enemy and use the classic no fog cheat to see what's happening. Okay, so set up a game with two players. Make sure the map is revealed. Okay, so we've hit a break point, so I'll do the Windows key tab, move to a new desktop, mess around with the win windowing dance, and we can see here that this is and we can see here that this is loading the Persian Elephant Archers AI file. So let's find that and open that up with something. Okay, so it's got some instructions here again we're still trying to figure out what these are but what's going to be interesting to see is how does the game actually play out in relation to this can we see any patterns so let me uh so so let me disable the breakpoint and continue into the game so now we're running use the no fog cheat this reveals the whole map so now we can just sit and watch what the enemy does so, they're building more villages, building some houses, just built another, another worker, so one, two, three, four, ah, so he's building something now, so what's he building? Okay, so he's built a storage pit, which interestingly was not on that list of things to build oh, and someone else has just popped in so one two three four five six six villagers six people where's he going jeff where are you going mate where are you going jeff decided to go uh get himself attacked by a lion how are we doing nice one guys keep it up Ah, so ah, interesting. So he has now just built a barracks, which was on the list. Okay, so they've now built a soldier, and still just doing standard resource gathering things. Slams. Slams. Oh, another soldier. Right, so they built two soldiers. Okay, so interesting, the AI has just done its first upgrade to the next um, era. So, uh, so they've now upgraded to the Tool Age, and I did a quick count, and the AI built two soldiers and 12 men. So I think this here could be the like a quantity column, because 6 plus 3 plus 3 is 12, and then 2 is here. So I'm starting to think that's what that could mean. Okay, so this number here is probably the quantity the AI should make, which makes sense, as we can see that the game fills in this data structure in a loop, which runs as many times as specified in the file. This code at the end is interesting. It gets a pointer from some offset into the first argument, probably the this pointer. It copies that address into some offset into our new struct, but then copies the address of that struct back into the original object, and finally it replaces the pointer at the argument offset with the new struct. 
What I think this is doing is inserting our object into the front of a linked list. And in fact, if we let the debugger run to the end of the code, we can use this offset to step back through each created object in reverse order. The real question now is, what is this mystery last value? When playing the game, I observe that these actions can happen out of order as defined in the file, so maybe the last number is some sort of priority? This would make sense, as you always start off with a town centre, so maybe minus one means highest priority. We know that the head of the linked list is at 0x160 bytes into this object, so I'm going to do my usual trick of dumping all the disassembly for the game in one file, and grepping for other code that uses that offset. There's a few places where it's accessed, and it looks like it's iterating through a linked list. It gets a pointer from that offset, loops while it's not null, and updates it using the same offset we saw from the previous code. I've had a little look, but nothing jumps out to me as immediately useful. We can get the offset that this mystery file is written to by looking at the memory dump of the new struct, so let's search for that. Interestingly, I found this function which looks like a getter, and if we look at what calls that, we get this. I think this is a logging function for some class in that it calls all these getters and passes the results to this format string. So looking at this string, this calls our mystery value build from, which actually doesn't really help me. Back to looking at callers of the getter, there's this function which then calls this function. There's a lot going on here, but essentially it compares our build from value against minus one, which we know to be a valid value, or some offset into this object. Now this happens in a loop, and if we set a breakpoint, we can see the value being compared. This is called every frame and always has the same fixed set of comparison values, but I'm still not sure what that means. Okay, so I've taken a bit of a break and I've come back to it, and the answer immediately hit me in the face as soon as I looked at those AI files again. These mystery values all match IDs from other actions, so I suspect this is some sort of precursor ID check that says this cannot happen before this other action. I mean, this makes sense because you cannot build the soldier before you've made the barracks. And this is what that loop that we saw does. It's going through all the previous actions to see if the prerequisite is met, or minus one for just do it. Ultimately, the game probably has some agency to skip or reorder steps based on other factors in the game, so this is probably just ensuring some sort of logical ordering. So we've had a whirlwind tour through the assembly of Age of Empires, but if you want more low-level shenanigans, then check out this next video.